Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics with your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. Lots to talk about today. Going to talk about the market overview where we're going to go into airdrop farming, what's happening there. Talk about the proof of conference, which got canceled, bike gans, and then end with a few notable sales and a security warning all today. So starting with volumes, you know, they're basically at nine month highs back towards bull market levels. I don't think volumes are the best metric to look at because there's so much airdrop farming, which is basically just people buying and selling NFTs very quickly that it doesn't really reflect market health in a way that I think is that important. What I think is more important right now is unique market participants, how many unique wallets are buying and selling NFTs, how many fees are being paid. So I think when you're paying royalties, that's a sign of a longer term transaction. More royalties generally just means people are in it, which I think is a bit more of a healthy transaction for the marketplace. And three, prices. You know, volume, if prices are going down or flat, doesn't mean as much as prices going up. That's what we all want. That's what we're here for. So let's look at those metrics. Starting with unique buyers. Unique buyers were at a four-month high. You know, so we are seeing that go up. Nowhere near the level of, of ETH volumes going up, but buyers are going up. Now, one thing that's interesting is that a lot more flippers are entering the market. This is kind of a crazy chart. What it looks at is how many unique wallets bought and sold the same NFT in one day on Blur. And since the airdrop or since the token came out, you can see we're up about 7X in that metric. And the people who are flipping are flipping more. So this looks at how many how many NFTs are each of those flippers flipping. And on average, we're looking at about seven ETH, which is the highest that this metric has been at before. The next metric I mentioned above there is royalties. You know, royalties did go up a little bit. We're not at one week highs, we're not at two week highs, but they are being sustained. And that's because there's so many trades going through at that half of 1% royalty. All the airdrop farmers are paying royalties on that airdrop farming at half of 1%, which has led to royalties staying, you know, kind of about in the range that they've been at in the past. In terms of prices, the large cap index was down a touch. The world of women set was up. It continues to be an airdrop farm project. Doodles was down. Moonbirds was down a touch. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Mid cap index was pretty much flat. We had some strength in a kid called Beast, weakness in uh, Renga. And I wanted to look at these two projects just to show you a sense of what this airdrop farming looks like visibly when you look at the charts. Okay, here's the Renga chart. And what you can see is it's all just these straight lines where people are dumping into bids, dumping into bids. And then normally what happens is those bidders will try to bid up the floor price a little, a little bit and establish a wall higher, continue to do that more and more. A lot of risk for manipulation. This is a very dangerous game to get involved in if you're not an expert. So I would be careful. If you want to get into airdrop farming, use small amounts, but you can really see how rigid and kind of abnormal this chart is for Renga. That compares with a kid called Beast, where a kid called Beast, you have more open sea and blur trades. You have a lot more grails being sold at higher prices, much more diversity of price. And the reason is that a kid called Beast is not being airdrop farm. Why is that? It's one of the newer projects that can enforce royalties. So airdrop farm or a kid called Beast is enforcing royalties, which makes it not a good airdrop farming target. And you're just getting much more normal market behavior as a result of that. Looking at the art, you know, we have nine projects that did 10 ETH of volume or more. You know, one that I kind of wanted to mention here, Genesis by Claire Silver, less about her, more just about last week. This entire list was brain drops and AI projects. She, there's only one sale there is at 11 ETH versus a 15 ETH floor. So I think we are seeing a little bit of a slowdown in the AI obsession. You know, Meta's come and go and they could get hot again soon. Who knows? But it has slowed down a little bit, a little bit there. Everything else was just two, three, four trades. Uh, in terms of projects ripping, OPEP in addition continues to be completely on fire. Jack tweeted about it. He talked a little bit about the history, said that there was initially no intention to build on OPEP in, but there will be another phase that will be different. He will update here. So an announcement about an announcement, but can't complain when the chart looks the way that that one does. Heads by Matt Fury, I think is getting a little bit of a sympathy pump here on the back of Pepe's being hot. Matt Fury is the original artist of the Pepe. You, know, you can see the floor, you know, rose about 0.6 ETH, something like 50% yesterday. So a really big move there in the in the heads by Matt Fury, uh, in the heads by Matt Fury project. You can see some of the art here, all very unique, diverse, some pretty cool art. So congrats to holders there. Congrats to Matt. And then the third trend to talk about or the third market is on meme cards. You know, we're all teenagers in the space. As we know, everyone is obsessed with the number 69. So with that, you know, when meme card 69 came out, they had to do a big special meme card, and they made it a crypto dick butt. Again, we are teenagers. Professor C. Richard Butt was the title. You know, it came out, they're only, I believe, 690, and the price started at one and a half ETH. You started to get some sales above two. Price came down to below 1.5, and we're right now at about 1.6. So kind of interesting behavior there, but uh, good to see that. Basically, 6529 meme cards have flattened out after coming off from the initial beginning of your pump.
Okay, second story. Proof of conference canceled. Someone came at me. I wouldn't say came at me, but tweeted after I tweeted the show notes yesterday. Why aren't you talking about proof of conference? The reason yesterday was actually because I record this before 10 a.m. Pacific time. We announced it after uh, I recorded it. Just a couple things, just to be transparent about my role and with this show, I figure I should tell you, I am a paid proof employee. I do have some stock options in the company. So that is something everyone I assume knows, but just being explicit there. I also do have access to information about proof that not everyone has. So because of that, I, I rarely talk about proof NFTs. It's also just to avoid accusations of bias or anything in that sense. Like when I worked at Goldman Sachs as a research analyst, we covered other investment banks as a research team, but we did not cover Goldman Sachs stock. I kind of see myself sort of similar. I try to focus on other projects and be as fair as I possibly can. Let's still dive in a little bit here into what happened. You know, with the team tweeted that they made the difficult decision to cancel the conference. You know, everybody would get their tickets, of course, refunded. Obviously, this is bad news. I was really disappointed to hear it. I understand why people were disappointed as well. In terms of what happened with Moonbird's prices, you know, it's such a weird environment right now where even when people are disappointed, airdrop farming seems to dominate price pr price performance more than anything else. I mean, this is just a crazy chart, all these right angles and you know, really th you know, thousands of trades over the past few days, but it's determined by the farmers. You know, it took a few hours for the price to have any impact. There was kind of this wall at 7.2 ETH or so, fell to below around seven and a half or six and a half, rose back above seven. When I woke up this morning, it was back above seven. And now it's uh, you know, still, uh, it's a little bit below above six and a half. So who really knows? It's really hard to figure out where sentiment begins and airdrop farming ends. But you know, clearly, you know, other prices are a little bit lower. In terms of total listed NFTs, I track this for Moonbirds. We've seen a little bit higher. So for a while, we were below 100 total listed NFTs for Moonbirds, uh, but a bunch of people did denest, and we're now at like 125. So a little bit of negative reaction to that news. Not too surprising. Third story to talk about. Bike Gans, a super hot project right now from Pinder Van Armen. We've talked about Pinder Van Armen before. One of the most interesting AI artists in the space. He dropped these. What I think is really interesting about this NFT, you know, it was modeled. It has the same look as Pod Gans, as Noun Gans, a couple other projects he's done. But what makes it unique is how basic it is. And what makes being basic awesome is that the entire project is fully done on chain. What does that mean? It basically means that, and this is a, a tough slide to understand, but it basically means that you can go to Etherscan, get strings from Etherscan, plug that into your Chrome browser and completely recreate this NFT. So it is entirely on chain. That was difficult for Pinder to do. It cost him over 30 ETH just to get these up. And he put that 30 ETH down before they even minted out. That's over $50,000. The stats about this project, 1,111 supply. Uh, the mint price was 0.33 ETH. The highest sale so far is 33 ETH, and the floor right now is 1.56. So up about 5x, huge success. There are three main types, the Octagon, the Skullgan, and the Cybergan. You can see them all here. These are the main, main types, but there also are some more rare NFTs. The King and the Queen, these are both the one on ones have already sold for 33 and 30 ETH. So a ton of interest going into this project. But as you know, Pinder has had sales much higher than this before, so it's not like a completely new project that people are paying up for. This is an artist people are familiar with, but interesting to see. Congrats to everybody involved here. Seriously, a cool success. And then lastly, going to talk about two notable sales and then a kind of weird sale with a little bit of a security uh, warning on top of that. First sale, Jack Butcher, price discovery, 7.75 ETH. This sold on foundation. Yeah, Jack Butcher just hits us in all directions. Yeah, this is a piece he sold last year. It only sold for one ETH last year. Obviously, with Jack being hot now, you know, this went for a price a lot higher. It says the value of this artwork is determined solely by the amount that the next person is willing to pay for it. Just classic Jack Butcher. You know, just the meta just comes in all sorts of directions. So congrats to the buyer and seller there. Second sale to talk about is this Fawocious one of one sold for 60 ETH. This sold on Blur. And this was a confusing sale to me because I think there are a lot of people who want to buy Fawocious one of ones. I was surprised that it sold on Blur without a bit more of an auction process or warning. Now, one of the if you look at the prior ferocious one of ones, you've had sales at 350 ETH, 231, 220. I did highlight this one in the lower right though, because this sold last year on OpenSea for just 17 ETH. So sometimes sellers just want liquidity and make sales, but still a little bit confusing that, that this was done, which seemed pretty hastily. Another thing that I noticed is that the royalties paid were just the bare minimum, half of 1%. The reason I thought that was interesting is because in the dialogue, I think we know that on PFPs, people like to floor the royalties. We're seeing it more and more on art blocks. I think there is hope that with one of ones, you will see 
uh, the community continue to want to support the artists with one of ones. So it was interesting to see that, you know, unfortunately in this case, the royalties uh, were not paid above the half of 1% minimum. Still, you know, can't scoff at a 60 ETH sale. Uh, so interesting to see that too. Last one I want to talk about is both a sale and a security warning. And I think it's, it's a security warning I think is important because we're seeing so many scams right now. And this one is getting more popular. 125,000 fake sales, mech mines, fake sale for mech mines. Now I say fake, it was on chain, but it was a flash loan uh, that enabled it where one person basically was able to just execute this very, very quickly and then send the money back. Mech mines, AI, the Twitter feed said they did this. They did it on purpose. The goal was to get the project to the top of the OpenSea sales list. Makes our life difficult on the data side but also to make people aware that with marketplace fees at zero, you're getting a lot more scammers. And it was very topical because just yesterday, a kid called Beast Gucci edition hit the trending. And this was a very well done scam. I actually think this, the scammers are getting smarter, like Gucci edition, a kid called Beast is hot. They associate with brands. Like it just felt like maybe it could be possible. But if you clicked on either of those links, you went straight to a scam site that would drain your wallet. Okay, so with zero fees, zero royalties, you know, a project can just set their royalties to zero. It's very important when you see something on trending, be double careful, don't click in, you know, make sure it's real. If it's something you haven't heard of, you know, just double, triple check. If it looks too good to be true, it is. You know, we see too many people lose their wallets and I, or get their wallets drained. And I think we're going to see more of it with these zero fees and more projects going to higher on trending. Hopefully OpenSea can figure out a way to identify them and remove them quickly. That's all from me. I hope you like the show. If you did like the show, like it below, subscribe to the channel, tell us what you think. We appreciate all those things. Even if you don't do those, we'll be excited to see you tomorrow and every weekday. Have a great day.